to the fifth verse. Genesis 17. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. Good. Is it me who can hear myself? So Genesis 17. Good. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord Okay, let me get a translation that we all can read. I was reading from the Living Bible. Let me go to New King James. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham, know the word Abraham, and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. If you read the King James, which I like, he said, and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him. Note that word. God talked with him. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Let's read verse 6. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you in their generation, for an everlasting covenant, amen, to be God to you and your descendants. And also I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are in, a stranger, all the land of Canaan, an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. May this be your portion. Before I start, let me give you a little bit of history. Abraham died at the age of 175. God called him at the age of 75. So it's like Abraham walked with God for 100 years. How many years? And after the 100 years, biblically, God spoke to Abraham seven times. It looks like these days God speaks too much to us. Or oh, it's not true. Out of the hundred years of Abraham's life, the man of faith, God spoke to him at least seven times. Now, if you are studious of your word and want me to send you notes on how many times God, where and where God spoke to him, I will send you the notes if you make a request on WhatsApp. But God spoke seven times. Some of you, within your last three years of being in bridge, you have received 20 prophecies. Or you have heard from God several times, but the issue is that why is it that God is speaking to you and that thing which God is saying to you is not coming to pass? Now, when God told Abraham to leave his father's land in Genesis chapter 12, you would have read that the Bible says, and God had said to Abraham, which is very past, he told him years ago. But Abraham decided when to respond to the call. God had said it to him. God told him to move before he was 75. And that he would make of him a great nation. By the time Abraham gave birth to his first son that God had spoken of, Abraham was 100 years. So it means that between when God told him he was going to have a child and when he had a child, it took 25 good years. How many years? How many years? 25 years. Now, in between the 25 years, by the time Abraham was 86 years, he had given birth to Ishmael, which was not God's will, which the Bible calls in the book of Galatians, the unrighteous child. The one who was out of God's will. By the time Abraham was 86, he could no longer wait for what God was saying. So now the question is that does God delay or we delay? And the truth is that we delay. We don't even know what God wants from us. 
Because God speaks into your future, and you have to package yourself into the future. Can I hear an amen? amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Like if you read the Genesis chapter 18, you realize that when God visited Abraham, he told him that in this time of, in the time of life, I will visit you, or when the angel visited, and you will have a child. When God said you will have a child, it has to take nine months for the child to be born, right? Because in time of life, children don't just become born. It must be conceived, must go through the trimesters, and then finally the baby is born. So in the realms of the spirit, the baby was born. But in the physical world, the nature of humanity makes it take at least nine months for the child to be born. Is it true or is it not true? Oh, I'm not here with you. Now, one of the things that makes God look, it looks like, God, is it possible for me to move down? One of the things that makes it look like it's impossible for, or it delays with God to do things for us, is because how many of you have tried to speak to a Chinese before? How many of you have spoken to Chinese people before? And you have to use an interpreter. What it simply means is that if you speak, the interpreter is. Amen. If we're speaking directly to the Chinese, you have the immediate response. How are you? I'm fine. Ooh, <laughs> he says, how are you? It's taking more time. Because delay is understand God. Can I have my hand? Because it's, it's still working. You don't understand what the language of God. Now, if you are a Chinese, which language do you speak? If you are from Spain, which language do you speak? Spanish. If you are Ghan, which language do you speak? If you are from England, which language do you speak? If you are Christian, which language do you speak? Tongues. That is unfortunate. Yeah, tongues is true, but you speak the language of faith. A Christian speaks the language of faith. A Christian doesn't speak the language of what he sees. A Christian speaks the language of what he wants. What you want and what you see are different. So if you have a bad boy, child, you don't call the child a bad boy. You keep calling the boy a good boy until he asks himself, why are you calling me a good boy? I'm not good. <laughs> the day the child tells you that I'm not good, stop calling me good, is the time he has begun to know that he must behave like a good boy. But as long as you keep saying to the child, your head like coconut, there is nothing in your head, you will not amount to anything, you are speaking the language that the devil understands, and that is what will happen. Can I hear someone say, God help us? I can't hear you. So Abraham walked with God for 100 years and all that God told him was God spoke to him seven times. How many times? Even after God told him that, hey, you are going to give birth to a child, he went home and he listened to the wife. And the wife gave him a nice business idea on how to have a child. And he got the child called Ishmael. And from that day till today, the Jews are fighting the Ishmaelites. They are fighting the Philistines. Why? Because the, the, the language of man is not the language of God. The idea of man is not the idea of God. When God met Abraham, one of the things that he did to him was to change his name. What did he do to him? I didn't hear you. What did he do to him? What did he do to him? He started calling him father of many nations when he did not have a sperm. 
And that is weird. It's like calling yourself rich when you don't have Kobo or Peshwa. You don't have anything. But God said, Abraham, I have a covenant with you from today. I don't want you to allow anybody to call you Abraham. If you are passing and hear Abraham, don't turn. If you turn, you have sinned. Any time you will turn, they must call you Abraham, which means the father of many nations. Now, many people are, we are serving God, but the reason why we can't serve God well is because we don't know who we are. When God told Abraham that from today, you are going to be, first is God told Abraham that I'll make you great. I'll make your name great. And that one are just adjectives. You will make it in life. But there was no specification. But by Genesis 17, God came to Abraham and said, this is this. The covenant, you, are my, you must do circumcision for it. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Someone say, be thou perfect. Now, let me give an example. Nobody can get anything from God by being perfect. And sometimes people say that if you live holy, you don't get attacks. And I keep saying, if I've been listening to my teachings on righteousness, that is really what I call a fallacy. Because if you read the Bible very well, in Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, the Bible, there's one person the Bible called was perfect. Abraham, the Bible said, and Job was a what? A perfect man. A perfect man. God himself was the one who said it. Nobody said it. That a guy was absolutely perfect. This is a man that was so perfect that if he, when his children go to do party, he will offer sacrifices in case they sin in their brain. So that in case they have sinned that he doesn't know, he has asked for forgiveness in advance. He was so perfect. But this is the man that lost his children. This is the man that lost his family. This is a man that lost his building. This is a man that lost all his business entities. But I've seen people that walk with the instructions of God. That is what we call having the mind of God, which is righteousness. And everything works perfectly for them. Am I talking to somebody here? Like I was listening to the story of Abraham this morning. A man who goes to say that his wife is his sister and he goes to take diary. No small diary. The diary Abraham took from the king of Egypt. Ah, my God, it's not easy. Goat, sheep, gold. And the following day, the king was going to do break virginity, consummate the marriage, and God said, if you don't know, and you touch this woman, you are a dead man. Return the child, return the woman back to the husband. And the king came and returned everything, Sarah back to Abraham, and the diary was not negotiable. The diary still remained. And the Bible still called Abraham a man who was righteous. Because what did he do? He trusted God. Look at something. Do you trust God? I can't hear you. And what did the person say? Now, did Abraham trust God 100%? I'll tell you no. If Abraham trusted God, why will you leave God's presence? When God, you have asked God that Eliezer will be your hair, and God told you that, no, somebody from your loins will be your hair. And you go home and your wife says, oh, eh, I'm not sure I can do it for you, so go and have something to do with the maid. Abraham did not resist. Abraham did not say, I bind this thought in the name of Jesus. Abraham was even, I'm sure Abraham was already looking at the woman every day and said, God, you have answered my prayer. Just went in one time and Sarah, before Sarah knew, Hagar was pregnant. No negotiation happened. Abraham just went on to do what he wanted to do. And God was silent with him for years. God never spoke to him again. After so many years, God said, then I want to make a covenant with you. I want you to be called father. How many of you can call yourself great? If you call yourself great right now, people will say you are too no. Who, what do you have that you are calling yourself great? But the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I ordained you as a prophet. But if today you go and tell somebody you are a prophet, say, who ordained you? But the fact that physically you have not been ordained, doesn't mean that spiritually you have not been ordained. I didn't think somebody heard me. So I have a message 
in this book, um, Paris Protocol, which I was thinking about the prophetic, and I said that you are before you are. You become what you are spiritually before you become physically. Am I talking to somebody here? That is why I was telling you last week that somebody can look at you when you don't even have a CD in your pocket and ask you, can you borrow me 1,000 Ghana? When you, the whole week, you have not even seen 100. But a person even didn't even take time to ask you for 50. The person looks at you and thinks that you have that money. And when you tell the person, I'm sorry, I can't give it to you, the person says, and he said, you are wicked. You don't want to even help me. Look at your life. But you know that you don't have because when God says you are, people begin to see that you are. And I want to tell somebody that you are what God says you are. So speak the language of faith. Say, I'll speak the language of faith. I didn't hear you say, I'll speak the language of faith. So a righteous person knows who he is. And who he is is not based on man's perception, but based on how God sees him. A woman was caught life in adultery, life, and was brought to Jesus. And they said to Jesus, this woman has done this. We caught her in the act. It's Gafili Gadochi. Look at it. It's on Facebook. Look at it. It's on, on Instagram. Everybody can even see it. We have witnesses. Jesus didn't say anything to this woman. He bent down and told all of them that if any of you have not even thought of this or done this before, take the stone and cast it to this woman. Everybody left. And when Jesus got up, look at what Jesus said. Jesus didn't call her useless woman adulterous woman. He said, woman, where are your accusers? And that was the first time someone was calling that lady a woman. Because God will always address you based on who you are and not what people think you are. So, when God met Jacob and Jacob was struggling with him, God asked him, what's your name? And Jacob said, me, I'm Jacob. Who is your father? He mentioned. And God went through the books. And when God went through the books, he said, ah, who named you Jacob? He said, my father. Why? He said, because I, I, I'm, I'm a thief. I'm a supplanter. He said, your father named you that. When I check the book, your name is not called Jacob. Your name is called Israel. You should be a prince. So in my book, what people say you are, it's not who you are. In my book, you are a prince. And I came to tell you that as a Christian, you must always go to God to find out who you actually are and not what people say you are. Can I, can I hear an amen? Because yeah. when people say you are something, very soon you become. Years ago, I was winning shows at Circle. And mainly my target were these prostitutes. Somebody went to tell my mom that I'm chasing girls. When I went home, there was Cain waiting for me. I was really beaten for winning souls. And after that, I went to my mom and I was like, Mommy, this thing you are saying, yeah, this one said he saw you. This one also says he stole you. I said, Mommy, I went there to preach. I said, this. You know what my mom told me? He said, let them say, but let it not be. Momonka. It's a man or more kind of what the end is. Most of us, we have allowed what people say about us and think about us to become our description. The doctor says, The doctor is not your maker. The lawyer says, The lawyer is not your maker. Everybody says, You, everybody is not your maker. My wife says, My husband says. So now, when God had to meet with Abraham, He said, Abraham. They call you Abraham, but that's not your name. In my book, you are called Abraham because you are a father of many nations. God will call you by what he wants you to be. So look at somebody and tell the person, I am a doctor, I'm a lawyer. Who you are, tell the person, who are you? See, you can't see anything. Also, we are Sanquas. <laughs> oh, amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Now, if God spoke to Abraham for only seven times in the Bible, there were other times it was an angel that spoke to Abraham. But in the seventh time that God spoke to Abraham, don't you think God has spoken too much to you? <laughs> Every service you want God to say something about you. Oh, so man, God, you mean can't be in fire, man. 
What is God saying? Every year you hear what God is saying. But you see, the difference between me, you, and Abraham is that about, and Abraham believed God. Yesterday, I had a long chat with one of, I didn't even know he was my cousin. That red cousin, I didn't even know. He has been my friend some time ago, and we've had chats before. When Facebook came fresh, those days we were not so many friends, so we exchanged numbers. And he put it on social media that he's confused that um, pastors have been saying that we were shipping in sin. And in sin did our mother conceive us. So everybody is shaping in sin. That's what God says we are. So I, I don't know what came over me. I took a phone and called this phone all, all the way in Europe. And I said, what are you saying on social media? Then the Bible says we're shaping in sin. And in sin did my mother conceive. I said, the Bible didn't say that. It was David who said I was shaping in sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Anything God has not said, the fact that it is in the Bible, that doesn't mean that it's God who said it. Naked I came, naked I shall go. It is Job, it is not you. You, you came naked. Me, I didn't come naked. When Jesus was born, wise men came to give him gifts. He came with a mandate. You came to this one with a purpose. You didn't come naked. God has a reason for bringing you to this earth. Of course, you can go back to heaven naked. But you are born with a dream. You are born with a purpose. You are born with a womb. You are born with something inside you that grows by day. So Paul said, though the outward man is perishing, the inner man is being renewed day by day. The fact that I am not it now doesn't mean I am not it. I am developing to become what God says I am. Can I hear somebody say an amen? amen. So, <coughs> David said, I was shaping in sin. And he said, of course, David's mother was a prostitute. So he can say that. He was born out of wedlock. So he can say that. You, 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 you are not born like that. So let us not quote what somebody says and say it like that is what God says we are. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, am I talking to somebody here at all? Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Now, look at someone say, who are you? So let's look at Romans chapter 8 from verse number 12. So, you can go through so many battles, and when you go through many battles, people will tell you that, eh, because of this and that, you are this, you are that. If you are not like this, you will not be like that. You are this, and you are this like that, and you are this like that. One of the things that I, I have done is, I was telling you that, I have not gone through deliverance. This thing called deliverance, I don't even know what it is. Because when I read about Jesus talking about deliverance, he said, Preaching deliverance. He didn't say casting out demons is deliverance. Jesus made, if we look chapter 4, deliverance is through teaching. Deliverance is through what? Teaching can cast out demons faster than binding her. Listen, listen, the Bible says he has exalted his word above his name. In the name of Jesus, demons go. But his word is powerful than his name. So when you practice the word, demons naturally live your life. Wait. Oh. Some people need injection to be free from malaria. If me, I live a certain life, I can never have malaria. No mosquitoes in my neighborhood. No mosquitoes in my house. Are you getting me? I'm always having fresh air. No um, corilla things around me. I don't need an injection. So, people, man, God, can you cast this demon out of me? You need deliverance every day by prayer because you are not living by the word. Oh, am I teaching here somebody here? Oh, are you here? So, you go, you, so, Health is different from healing. Healing only comes because you are sick. Health is you never fall sick. And God wants Christians to walk in health. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here at all. May you walk in health this year. I said, may you walk in health this year. So, in, okay, let, before we go to um, this Romans 8, when Moses were going to meet Pharaoh, Moses met God. Exodus chapter 3. And Moses told God, give me verse 13, 14. That if I go and Pharaoh asks me, who sent me? Who should I say? 
sent him. And verse 14, God said, when you meet Pharaoh, tell him that the I am that I am sent you. Who, is, who, sent, who sent Moses? <laughs> because you can't go say somebody has sent me. The person has a name. And God told Moses, tell Pharaoh, I am what you make me to be. I am that I am sent you. So who is God to you? Am I teaching something here? Do you know that many people believe that as for God, when you trust him, it will take a long time. Is it true? It's never true. Okay, let me say this. Quick, quick, get up. Quick, quick, get up. You see, it's not everybody who is kweku. So those who are kweku, got up. If they say sickness, get up, and you are not sick, you don't get up. If they say poor people, you don't get up. You only respond to who you are. So when Satan, there is a curse and it is working, you are responding because something in you tells you you are. Kweku people sit down. So when you are there, and somebody saying that these people they are going to get coronavirus. The day you said a radime wo, you are one of them. You just responded to a call. Oh, amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. Oh, amen. 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 When they say we are going to the embassy for a visa. If you know that there's a demon in your house and when you go, they won't give you get out. Say, please, take my name out. <laughs> I beg you. I'm like Jonah. Anywhere I go, people feel, take my name out. When they say you are looking for a job and they say 2,000 people applied and they will take only four, you tell them that I'm one of the four. So I say, hey, then based on the people I saw there, I think... Do you know people came there? They were with four by four. Some came with doctorate and masters. Yeah, then we would just this thing, dear. We are not qualified, though. You say, mm, Oh God, even your prayer is a doubtful prayer. Oh God, please, oh, oh God, that prayer simply is you telling God that you are failed in advance. But when they come and tell you that they are only taking four, you tell them that me, I am the first person to be called. How do you know? Because God calls you by who you are. Look at some say, I am a child of God. So Romans chapter 8 from verse number 12. Let's look at who we are in Christ. Look at some say, I'm somebody. No. So the first thing you are is I'm a child of God. Who are you? 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 Or take a course one another. <laughs> Some people go and look for a job, and when they see their name, their name alone is scarce. Years ago, I was a very bad boy. I'd gone to the Ghana National College to chase girls. And soldiers came there to arrest us. They were taking me to cast a long story to the police station. I was a student. When we were going, they said, What is your name? I said, Francis Yale. He said, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm Francis Yale. Is your uncle the regional minister? I said, Sam. Uncle Sam. He said, is your uncle? I said, yes. And I wasn't lying. He asked my uncle. They dropped me down. I was wrong. But they dropped me down, not because the man is my father. Actually, I don't, I've not spoken to the man before then. I didn't even know him, but I knew he was my uncle. I only spoke to him, I think, about five, six years ago. But physically, I'd never spoken to him. But by the mention of the Yale, and he's the regional minister under the, the NDC, um, the, then there was the military regime. Oga, okay, drop him down. This guy, 
it is only trouble. Just because I carry the name. Do you know that when you carry the name Christian, do you know what does that to the devil? Do you know, do you know what that thing means to you to say I am a child of God? Even politicians who don't know anything, they are just connected to political power. Police bar arrest them and say, Kr, kr, talk to this man. Say, oh, okay, we are sorry. Why? Because of who you know. But this is not somebody who you just know. The Bible makes us to know that. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. Because of this, let me move there. Romans chapter 8, sorry, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the, as many as are led by the, they are the, as long as you are being led by, you are being led by the flesh. Many of us are being led by the flesh. I feel like shouting. I don't shout because I feel like. I shout because the Bible said, clap your hands all you poor and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I don't need to feel it. So many people say, I feel like I'm going to make it. No, you don't have to feel like you're going to make it. You must know that you are going to make it. I don't have to feel. You see, when you live by the flesh, you feel by the senses. Eh, you see a family. You see a family. Hey, I'm back. Catch him, catch him, catch him, catch him. Tell me, tell me. You say, eh, you are family. When you heard it, hey, no. One who is led by the spirit, God says you have made it. And so if even they don't tell you, you already have the joy of the Lord in you. As many as are led by the spirit. Look at something, who is leading you? We are in a generation that people want to hear. (laughs) Man of God, tell me, what is God saying? No. Whatever a man of God should tell you should be just a confirmation of what God has told you. That is why we struggle to obey God. Because if God has already told you, and a man of God is saying it, it is just confirmation. And that simply means that God has spoken twice. Get a move on. But many don't even know that. But as many as are led by the... Look at someone say, do you have the Holy Spirit? Many people are born again, they don't have the Holy Spirit. They have their grandmother's spirit, their grandfather's spirit. When they dream, ancestors come and speak to them. They're going to try this little say Kai. Eh? I'm your wife, but I don't feel like sleeping with you. I don't feel like you don't feel. Do you have to sleep with your husband before you because you feel? No. I'm telling you. He said, he said well, I don't feel like it. I'm not in the mood. You don't need to be in the mood. Something must happen to me for me to know that I'm in the mood. You are too kind. I always say this that you want a baby. I think I'm talking to somebody here. When they touch it, nah. When they touch it now, when they touch it now, when they touch it now, they say, God, you are delaying. God is not delaying. Do the work. I don't feel like. If I'm a demon, anytime you ovulate, you never feel like. So whether I feel like, I don't feel like, I will feel, I will want. Because I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. When you are going to write exam, do you learn because you feel like? You learn because you want to what? Pass. It's the result that motivates you. It's not a feeling. As many as are led by the spirit, as long as you are led by your senses, you are failed. I don't feel like going to work, but because of the pay, I will go. When you go to work, they say, hey, Charlie, it's good I came home. In that same way, you don't have to feel like going to church. 
His word says, let's not forsake. Hebrews 10, 25. The assembling of ourselves together as a man of summit, but which exhort one another in the Holy Ghost as the day is approaching. So I don't go to church because I'm in the mood. Oh, no, I have to. So they sing, I sing because I'm happy. You are, you are in trouble. He said, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So when I'm feeling heavy, I will have to dance. I don't dance because I have a miracle. I dance because I need to take heaviness out of me so that I will have a miracle. So if you are waiting for something to happen before you dance, then you will never be happy in life. Many people want to wait. They think God will bless me the way I will dance. <laughs> no. The government of praise is wearing you. I think I'm not teaching well. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons. So, at any time what you are doing is led by the Holy Spirit, automatically your DNA becomes that of God. You are no longer a yale. Am I teaching somebody here? You are no longer physical. People get pregnant and the week they are pregnant, they will feel malaria. They will feel malaria. So they go and take, don't go to hospital. They are, I hear me say, Menya malaria. I hear me say, Menya malaria. Then they will take malaria medicine, which could destroy the whole pregnancy. And here will say, You feel like, you feel like. There are so many times you feel things, you go and do a test, and the doctors will tell you, There is nothing wrong with you. Is it true? It's not true. Yeah. So, why are we living by feelings? Look at them and say, I'm a son of God. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. So, do you understand that word as being a son of God? Let me explain it to you further. If you were the president's son, how would you behave? Yesterday, I was talking to my daughter and she was showing me something she has to buy on her phone. And I was telling her it's $5. So she, has, she must work for it. And she said she needs it immediately. So I said, I'll have an arrangement with you. Every time you dress my bed, one CD. Then this girl sat there and calculated and realized that, oh, yes, <laughs> They said, but daddy, I am your daughter. I said, I don't understand. I said, I'm your daughter. Your money is my money. Wait a minute. This girl is trying to teach me wisdom. She's trying to use wisdom to outwit me. I said, currently, daddy doesn't have money. He said, anytime we get money, you will buy it for me, right? I said, yes. The truth was that I was treating her like a worker. She had to remember me that she's not a worker. She's a daughter. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? And sometimes God can treat you like a worker. And you need to just remind God that God, I'm not one of your workers. No. I'm your son. And I'll t- get you there. And if you know this, you know that when sons come in, sons are not workers because sons inherit so every son or a daughter has automatic share. So whatever you are asking for is not something that is for your father. You already have a share in it. You are just collecting your portion. That's why the prodigal son was able to go to his father and say, give me my share. Because already what I'm asking for, I'm already a shareholder. So who's, if someone asks you, who are you? I'm still teaching our righteousness. Who are you, cry? Tell them boldly. I am the son of God. John 1, 12. As many as received him, he gave them power to become sons of God. You see, it's delegated. I have children in this church. I have church, I have children. Some they behave, if they don't tell you they are not my real children, you would think that they are. 
There are children who are even adopted in real life. If they don't tell you they were adopted, you will never know. And our kind of sonship is adoption. I didn't hear you. It's what? Adoption. Let me give you a practical example. How did Joseph become Jesus' father? When the truth is that Joseph's seed was not what gave Mary pregnancy. The angels asked Joseph to adopt that child and make him. So we say Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. But by birth, Jesus is not from the tribe of Judah. Jesus coming from the tribe of Judah is by adoption. Oh, amen. I can't hear you. Amen. And he said the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Okay, let's read. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, the other son go. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Hereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hereby we cry, what? Somebody asked me that, why is that a church building? We didn't put a bridge there. It's Abba. Because that is the name of God. Abba, Father. Whether you start from the front or you start from the back, it's A-B-B-A. Whether it's from the beginning or the end, he's still God. Whether you like it or not, he's an eternal father. Whether you're a good boy or you're a bad boy, he's your father. And that is why we call our church brother Abba House. Because God is your father. And when God is your father, he says, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Why? By the spirit of God, you cried about people who don't have, see themselves as sons of God are those who live in fear. Listen, two, somebody came to Jesus with a sickness and Jesus told him that I can't give this thing to you because you are not my child. I only came for my children. And the woman said, okay, if the children even eat, the drops fall down uh, and the dogs eat it. So give it to me, the dog to eat. Let me tell you this. In other words, there's a special package for those who are sons from those who are not sons. And those who are sons, there's something that has been prepared for you. If you believe that you are a son of God, a daughter of God, shall I receive my adoption? Say, I receive my adoption. So next time you meet any demon, tell the demon, do you know whose child you are joking with? If you've never said that, you've never, you've, you've, you've never seen God as your father. Uh, he knows my name. That's the father we know. He knows my every talk. He sees every tear that falls. And he is me when I call. I have a father. I have a father. He calls me. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me No matter where I go Wait, the Bible said I wish they can give me the scripture Servants don't stay in the house But a son abides in the house forever You see, as a pastor Anytime I hear somebody who is my spiritual son or spiritual daughter say, I'm leaving the ministry. I know that you were never a child in the first place. Because the Bible is only servants that go away. Sons don't go away. So in, when you become a son of God, there is no way you can backslide. When you really become the real son of God. Has, has there been a time that somebody felt like he was not a son of God before? Yes. Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He saw God as God. But when he was about to die, he was wise. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He was too wise. Because if you had gone to call him still God, he would not be mandated to save him. Because when he's your God, he treats you like an ordinary somebody. But when you are his son, he has a mandate to save you. So Jesus said, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But he ended up saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And I always tell people, if you keep having bad dreams, this should be your last prayer before you sleep. Father, into your hands, 
I commit my spirit. You don't commit your body to God. God is not interested in your body. He's interested in your spirit. Nonsense. This flesh, it will decompose. He doesn't want your body. Am I teaching well? Yeah, I'll clap for myself because I think I'm teaching well. Any Christian who walks in fear has not accepted the fact that God is his father. One day I read this Bible, your own Bible, and it said that no father, when his child asks him for bread, will give him a stone. If you ask God for bread and he gave you a stone, then you, you see God as God, not a father. You can ask him for fish and he'll give you a snake. If he's your father, he will give you the husband you ask for, the wife you ask for, the child you ask for. He will give that to you. He will not give you something else. Many people have God as their God. But they don't have God as their father. And it's, it's, there are two different things. Even in this church, it will shock you that I have church members that are church members and I'm not their father. I have more spiritual children outside church than church. Someone said, I wonder, I'll teach you what are the examples of a child of God. And I'll teach that alone. You, a child always resembles his father. Is it true? It's not true. So when Satan sees you, he sees God. Because you resemble, ah, like I said, well, when him say, are you related to this family? Why? And the way you look like, the way you are fair, and from Nigeria, everybody know which tribe Nigerians look like you. Is it true? It's not true. Ghana, if you are very fair like this, which tribe are you likely to come from? Vota. <laughs> when I was in Addis Ababa College, they used to say, oh, Addis Ababa boys are black. I don't know where they took that from. But I wasn't black. But I said, we are all dark. I see they select black people to go there. Oh, amen? amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. Shout, I am a son of God, a daughter of God. Say it boldly. Yeah. And you know how you get this thing? You believe it. It's like somebody says, I have adopted you. They check the DNA. It's not the same, but it's by adoption. It's legal. And spiritually, Jesus came to die so that he can purchase me and you and make us his children. Look at someone and say, can I show you who my father is? And tell them, who is your father? Tell them, God is my father. He owns the whole world. All the cattle belong to him. All the gold belong to him. Should I tell you more? He created Adam and Eve. <laughs> if you want to hear more about my father, I will tell you. It will take you a whole year. Number two, the next thing you are is you are forgiven. Say, I'm forgiven. I didn't hear you. Say, I'm forgiven. Do you know the difference between you and an unbeliever? The unbeliever sins and his sins are upon his head. But you, you, when or in case you sin, your sins are forgiven. Let me give you an example. We are in Ghana, Abi. I didn't say anything. Two people can insult a judge. One is arrested. One nobody calls. Can you dare call? Try this. Ten people can insult a president. Nine will be taken. One, I see nobody had. 
Not even Christian council or whatever council can say anything. Yante, yante, yante. You didn't hear that. What is that? When you are a Christian and you live your life, an unbeliever lived their life, both of you are not the same. When you are both brought before judgment seat, God will say, ah, as for this one, my blood has washed him. You, what has washed you? This one has a political card. You, what card do you have? Oh, amen. Shut I am forgiven. Number three. I am delivered. I'll, put, I'll give you the scripture for this together. Number one, I'm a son or a daughter of God. Okay, let me put it together. I'm a child of God, number one. Who are you? I am a... Number two, you are what? I'm for... Number three, I am delivered. You are not, when you become born again, you are not about to be delivered. You are delivered. First, the demons in you were legal. But when you become born again, they are illegal. Let's go. Number four, I'll put all this and give you a scripture. You are redeemed. Okay, let's go to Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. Colossians 1, are we there? Who is going to deliver us from the power of darkness? Is that what is your Bible? He is going to deliver you. Oh, I didn't hear you. you, you Paul was not talking to Jews. Oh. He was talking to Colossians. They were Gentiles like us. He, when you become born again, you will come for deliverance. Read the Bible. He has what? Delivered us from. Now this one, you have to believe it all. Oh. Pastor. Eh? Pastor, yes. What is it? But show me here deliverance. You have already accepted it. When you get to the airport and say, all nationals of the country, right? All foreigners left. Nationals just go through. Pa, pa, pa. When you are not a national, you go through the immigration, all those long when you are a citizen of a country and you said you join the long queue, you will go in the queue being nurse, nurse, nurse. When you get there, say, oh, what are you doing here? Uh, uh, they said we are passing here. No, 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 no. You are a national. You can't even pass here. Go back and join. Many don't know that when you give your life to Jesus, you see, you handed your life to Jesus. And when he took over the life, the first thing he did to you after, after making you a son, forgiving you, is that he delivers you. You are already delivered. So what we do in church is to enforce your deliverance. Shut! I am delivered. First, now me typhoid. No, it be three months ago. Are you still saying typhoid? Oh, you see, in my family we struggle to marry. Which family are you talking about? Some say, so should I forget that? Yes, it's no. They are real. They are there. But what you believe is what you are. No, we've been singing this song. We don't. I know who God says I am. You don't really know who God says you are. I'm telling you what God says you are. God didn't say you were shaping in sin, and in sin did your mother conceive you. It's not God. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in. A, I need a life of heaven. Oh, turn your neck and one day take a look at me. I'm a wonder. Are you sure you know what you are talking about? It doesn't matter what you see now. Huh? I know who. Now tell me who you are. <laughs> it will come very soon. No. He said. He has delivered us from the powers of darkness. And what? 
translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So when you become born again, he delivers you from the powers of darkness and translate. Someone said translate. I said, oh, American, you are born about Ghana. Translate. Wow, born. So my number one immigration chain. They are difficult to play with rum. We need to buy new Ghana. Man, fashi. Of course, when you are delivered, you can't carry anything. You didn't carry captivity. You didn't carry bondage. You didn't carry trouble. He took you out. Am I teaching somebody here? They don't arrest you and you say, I have a bank account. I'm going to withdraw for the share. And, you don't pay. and the pastor, so all they say, how does it work for me? You have to believe it. Who told you your name is Francis? Your parents. And you have believed it to date. And to date, everybody who calls me Francis, I respond. Who told me I'm called Francis? My parents. They told me I'm called Francis. I don't know why they didn't choose any other name but Francis. And me too, I added Dwayne. And since if you call me Dwayne, I respond. Dwayne, I like it and I added it. Your parents believe you and they call you something. You believe it and you respond to it. And Francis means free-minded. And I'm a free-minded person. I don't have any time to think about anybody. It has worked on me. So if he says that you are delivered, say I'm delivered. And say I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap offering here. Yeah. You need to understand this righteousness thing. You know. It's a mentality, it's a mindset. When you meet God and you are talking to him like, and God, you are my I'm you are my father, and you can't do this to me. Said, okay, okay, let's let's talk on father level. See? Jesus came on there and said, Our oh, Father, which art in heaven. And the Jews said, Hey, why do you call him father? If Abraham doesn't call him father, so before Abraham. I am. What do you mean? Yes. Because I'm already in him. Were you not born? How old are you? I'm not just 33. How do you then say that you were born before Abraham? How? Is Abraham not your grandfather? He said you can, ask, you can agree that Abraham is my grandfather. But to me, Abraham is not my grandfather. I was born in Christ. And the people fought me. When you begin to tell people your nature in God, they will fight you. They will argue with you. But like Jesus, don't give up. Tell them that God is so your father. Your sins are forgiven. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. If you are the one I'm talking to, shout, I receive it. And in whom we have redemption through his blood, if you want the forgiveness of sins, say, My sins are forgiven. You don't know what that, that word, if someone tells you your sins are forgiven, you don't know the deliverance that comes with it. It's like a prisoner that is told to serve 40 years in prison. And a president comes in and says that you are forgiven. Look, when you get out, the people who you stole their thing, if they see you, say, hey, what are you doing here? You are not supposed to be working here. Say, I know. But a president says, my sins are forgiven. There's nothing a person can do. Yes, it is true that I have offended you. But the king of kings, the lord of lords, my father says I am forgiven. So I can, you want me to be in jail because I did A, B, C, and D. You want me to be in bondage because I have this thing. That is the law. I have to pay. But when the king of kings said that I am free, you can't do anything about it. And I came to tell somebody here that when you become born again, your sins are forgiven. Say my sins are forgiven. Do you believe it? How is your sins forgiven? You are saved by grace. I'm saved by what? Grace. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Through what? And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Say, My sins are forgiven. It's faith. When they ask somebody, Why are you voting for this political party? He said, should I tell you the truth? I said, yes. He said, I have a friend who is in Sawam. 
And the president, the one who is in opposition, says that when they come to power, they will use their connections to get a person out. Wow. So this person voted for a political party so that they will get his colleague out of prison. And if that is possible, when you also accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, your sins are forgiven so that the devil can no longer put you in bondage. So they tell you that you are sick because of this. You are suffering because of this. You are going through this thing because of this. Yes, it is true. I had to go through it. But because of my decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and it's my father, he has given me grace. Someone say grace. You are not here to shout grace. grace. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. He doesn't just forgive your sins. He justifies you. He, the word justify simply means he makes you what? Righteous. The word justify means that just as if I never sinned. Say it. Just as if I never sinned. That is justification. Just as if I never sinned. People will see you and call you a sinner. But in God's eyes, he justifies you. Okay, let me give you an example. Did Abraham lie? When he said his wife is his sister, yes. But later Abraham said it's true. He was my sister because the mother also is my auntie. We are related. We should be cousins or half sister. It means that that thing, he never lied. May God justify you. May you be justified. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. Can I have it? And such were some of you, but you are what? Washed? Someone say, I'm washed. The next thing he does to you is that, say, I'm sanctified. Say, sanctified. The word sanctification means being set apart. This means you are supposed to go to new converse class for Pastor Bumas and his team to teach you. So that you know who you are in Christ. You are born again and you won't go for the class. Oh, amen. amen. I've, I didn't hear your amen. amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. Now, what's the difference between sanctification and justification? This is from the dictionary. Because my professor. Justification is God declaring that a sinner is righteous because of Jesus Christ. And sanctification is God's transformation of a believer's hoping that is his mind, his will, his behavior, his affections to the work of God. So let me, a lot of people are justified, but we go back doing the same thing all over again because we have not been sanctified. But when, oh, are you with me? Did you get a scripture on sanctification? First Corinthians six eleven. Sanctification. You want me to quote it again? Oh. Justification is God's declaration, declaration that a sinner is righteous because of the work of God. Just is justification. And what did he do? He stole my goat. Okay, I've given you two goats. Set him free for me. That is justification. He has done this. He must pay the price. Okay, punish me instead. That is justification. But sanctification is God's transformation of a believer's whole being. A total transformation. That is the mind, the person's will, the person's behavior, and affects through the work of the Holy Spirit. This is Google 
February 6, Google, 2017. Google. May you be sanctified. I didn't hear you. So sometimes people say, I keep repeating it. I keep doing it again. I tell myself, I will not do it again. I come and I keep going to go for forgiveness. I keep going to go for forgiveness. I keep going to go for forgiveness. You keep going to go for God. You have not accepted the sanctification. You don't want mind renewal. Sometimes when people go and mess up, they come to me. And they tell me what they've done wrong. I tell them, tell me what happened. And they say, eh, and at this, and at this. You know why I tell them to tell me what happened? If you know what happened, you know how it should not repeat itself because you saw the process. <laughs> but if you don't know how it happened, then it will happen again. A thief comes to your house. Where did he pass? I don't know. Then they will come again. But when you know where the thief passed, and came to the house, you lock the place, you secure the place, you, you safeguard the place. May we be sanctified this year. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Say, I'm led by the Spirit. The next one, when you become a believer, the next thing that happens to you is that you become a partaker of God's nature. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. Say, I'm a partaker of God's nature. What is God's nature? Nisun in the bind. How does God behave? Whereby are given unto us a seed in what? Grace and precious promises. That by this we might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through last. Some say divine nature. Now, let me, even with me, let me give an example. People who have worked with me for a long time. There are people who sometimes call my phone and Pastor David is on the line. And they think it's me. How many of you have heard it happening to you before? You are talking to Pastor David, you think it's me. And sometimes, even people in my office, you are telling them something, telling them, this day you go and tell Pastor, he will say this to you. And as if they know, when you come, I'll tell you the same thing. And how did they know that this is what I'll say? Because when you associate with God a long time, you begin to pick up his mentality. So you, you solve problems that God will solve the problem. You think like God will think. So people wonder, are you God? Yes, I am God. Why? Because I think like God. You, listen, your new nature makes you pick up his nature. I know people who don't have law degree. But they have stayed around lawyers so much that they know law. The only thing they can't do is they can't go to court. But they can advise you on law and you will pass. They can even teach you how to process your case in court. And when you go, you win. But they don't have any qualification. But by association with lawyers, you can never associate with God and never pick his nature. May you know that you have the nature of God. Your amen is not good at all. Sir, I am redeemed. I didn't hear you. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Say, I'm redeemed. And your fiance, it's not now that God is going to save you. You are not your own. Say, it is my life. I do what I want. Shut up. You don't have a life of your own. My life is not my own. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Some say, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Why are you suffering? Hmm, Pastor, they say that my mother slept with somebody's dog. And so I am cursed. Who is talking? Do you know who you are? No, you don't know who you are. Hello? Hello? You don't know who you are? Christ, is he going to redeem you now? Oh, no, wait. Oh. It is something he has done already. He's waiting for you to pick it. You order for fried rice and chicken. Then they call it, it is ready. 
come and pick it. You have order for it. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Let me say, so how can I work it? How can I make it? Give me Psalm 107 verse 2. Let dead redeemed of the Lord say so. You must say it. You must confess it. When they say that because of this you are cursed, you must speak about your redemption. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my say, if you I'm happy and blessed. Watching and way. I'll continue next week. Looking about. Filled with his goodness. Washed in. Why are my instrumentalists? So when they ask you, who are you? You say, I'm blessed, I sure. Are you in a hurry, Andrew? I'm waiting for you. Jesus is my Oh, what? Of glory divine. They say, who are you? He say, you want to know? I'm an hair. Next week, I'll talk about it. Meet your idea. The whole world, I'm a share in it. I'm purchased of God. Born of I'm washed in his blood. So what is your story? Who are you? This is my story. I'm not bringing you certificates. No, it doesn't qualify me. I'm praising. I'm praising. I'm praising my Savior all that day. So let's do it. Number one, who are you? Who are you? are not bold, cry. Who are you? You are not confident. Who are you? Which God? Which God is that? The one who created the heavens and the earth. Everything in the world belongs to him. He decides what to do and what not to do. If he says you are dead, you are dead. Let me tell you a short story. The late Archbishop Ben Shidahosa. Our own Archbishop went to see him years ago and told him that he wants to preach on TV and they don't want him to. So he wrote a letter to the then Ghana government that this is my son. Let him preach on TV. And the then head of state said, who is Idahosa to command me to put you on TV? Get out. When they sent a message back to the late Idahosa, he said, he wants to know who I am. One week he's out of power. And within one week he was out of power. And he gave Archbishop another letter. Go and give to this new president. When he went, he said, my father says, I should give you this. Because the other one, he says no. And he went. And the guy said, Which, when do you want to start? <laughs> if they want to know your father, tell him that this is your father. He can kill people. And leave you alone. He can protect you. You see, you must let the world know who this your father is. This your father, he gave these people manna to eat in the water. 40 years they didn't fall sick. Which medicine can make you live 40 years? You don't fall sick. As you are growing, your shoe is growing. Which medicine? 
They didn't buy cloth. As they are growing, their dress is growing on them. Which, which kind of God is this? You want me to tell you about my father? Do you have time? Do you have time? This is my father who can take dust and put it on somebody's eye and the eye comes back. Why? Did somebody not manufacture the eye well? Who is your father? Who is your father? He's the one that told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. And Pharaoh didn't do it. And he killed every firstborn in the land. Do you want to go or you want to stay? Hurry up. Should I introduce you to my father? And when you are speaking like that, the devil knows you know who you are. And the world knows who you are. And God begins to feel that. My son, you are telling them about me. Keep on doing it. Tell them and let me show them who you are. I mean, I've seen it so much, I don't want to talk. I was driving and somebody did misbehave and said, come up for the who are you? I said, who am I? I said, you are in trouble. The guy was going, the car caught fire. He went to overtake me. Now your car is on fire. He stopped. I was going, I looked. I said, how are you? He opened the bonnet. I had, I had fire extinguisher, I passed. Who are you? They don't know who you are. Number one, you are what? So you are not saying, who are you? You are not a child of some useless person. Who are you? No, you don't say child. Child is there. You can do child in here now. You can hear. You can hear. You can hear. Child. 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 You can hear. Child. Say it. Who are you? Feel good about it. Look, God said, children, he said, healing is the children's bread. Read your Bible. Say, the bread my children eat is healing. See, that's why you don't have to fall sick. I'm growing old. I'm getting to 50. I still don't have a hospital card. It's not that I don't feel sick at times, so. It's not that. No, 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 I do. Or sometimes you might tell that devil who you are. Number two, who are you? You are what? When the unbelievers are with tell the person that you, your sins are on you. The curse of the sin is on you. You will suffer for your sins. You too, you have done and you suffer. Say, no, me. My sins are all washed away. Jesus has taken my bad sins away. Oh, once I was a sinner, saved by grace. Once I was a sinner, hey, my sins are wa- washed away. So once I was a sinner. So they look at this. Ah. Well, we all not arm robbers. How come you are a pastor? Ozi, yam bonia chaye, waba betina yemo yeko. You know, when we go to heaven, they will line up. Yes? Daniel Afari! Then you will come. Daniel Afari! Have you thought about women before? Oh, yes. Have you seen before? Yes. Then you have to go to hell. Then they will press. Ah, you are not going. Ah! Have you given your life to Jesus? Yes. Are your sins forgiven? Yes. Wrong line. Go. Then somebody too will come. Me too, I was a sinner. Me too, I was a this. They pray that thing. Bah! Because nobody has paid the price. 
Nobody wants to bail you. You are still in prison. But you, you have been bailed. I say you have been bailed. Jesus himself came to bail you by forgiving you your sins. Say, say I have been bailed. There is no bail condition they can put on your head you will not pay. I didn't remember Jack Rattle in the life. And he's already rich. So what condition can they put on your life that he can't pay? Say, I am forgiven. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. You know, you know let me tell you this. If you are very sick, 100% the reason for sickness is your sins. Read James chapter 5. He said, let them pray over oil and, um, and anoint him. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if you have sinned, it will be forgiven. Most sickness because of sin. So when God says you are forgiven, it's up to you to accept it. Believe it. Take it like you take paracetamol. Some medicines are bitter. Living bitters. Swedish bitters. You have to close your nose, some of them. But when you take it, you see that their body cool. Shout, I am forgiven. When somebody looks at you and says, your sins are punishing, you say, me? I'm forgiven. He said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just. And wait, if he doesn't forgive you, then he's not a faithful God. And he said, he is faithful and just. So, if you are still sick, say, Lord. Oh, say it up. Say, Lord. Lord. Any sin sin. I have committed, that I don't remember, so I have not confessed. Forgive me. So what again? So number one, I'm a son of God. Mention your own. Amen. Number two, I am forgiven. Number three, I am what? 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 Say, I am delivered. You are not going to be delivered. You are. You have been. You are already. Say, I am free. I am delivered. Somebody came and said, man of God, I don't understand you. I said, what's your problem? How do you go to people who are sick and you do this and you throw it away and you are healed? I said, ah, the person is already healed. It's the demon that was hanging around. I just moved them and threw them away. You are healed and they say, oh, no, you are not okay. You will suffer. You are okay. I cut it up. So some people are, you can't pray for it. I say, I do this. And I do this in your ears. Ah, what did the pastor do? I cut off those people who are telling you that you won't make it. I cut off those communications. And all of a sudden, when you don't hear them alone, you hear God's voice alone telling you, I will make it. Shout, I am delivered. Four. After deliverance, what? You are what? Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Come on, say it. Say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Redeemed. Redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Come on. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God, 
Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy outstretched arms. So what do you tell him? Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Great mighty God, great counsel and mighty indeed. Nothing So wait. You are sick. God forbid. You are in hospital. You are okay. You can't pay your bill. Somebody steps in there and says, how much is that? They say $10,000. And somebody pays and say you are going home. The person says, it is not you who paid so you can't go. Will you lie in the hospital? The blows I will give you. Eh? What do you mean? Somebody has paid my price for me to leave the hospital, you still want what? That this rate, I'll prove to you, I'll put the person aside who paid. And I will deal with you one on one because I realize that you are my personal enemy. So anybody who doesn't accept the fact that you have been redeemed, though, it's a personal enemy. Then you must put your God aside and deal with that person. Shut, I'm redeemed. Tommy Abwati. He paid their debt. I owe their debt. I'm, I want the message to sink in your head, though. This is real deliverance. Now, now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. He paid the debt. He paid the debt. I needed someone. And Jesus came in right there. Now I can sing a brand new song. Lord Jesus paid. Let's move on. After redeemed, at this point, if I meet you and I ask you, you don't remember, you have to go for deliverance. It's like a poor that will come in your exams this year so that when you face the test, you just apply. Ah, I'm redeemed. Hey, I'm forgiven. Okay, the next point is what? You are what? You are what? You are what? Justified. Justified before sanctified. Okay. So you are what? You are what? Say I'm justified. So you can't hold anything against me. Look at me. You can't hold anything against me. What your mother, your grandfather, your grandparents did cannot be held against you. You can't, you, why? Someone has paid for it. It hasn't paid for it. Some say, Pastor, but it's troubling me. It's because you have not enforced it. If a court gives you a paper that this thing is yours, you must give it to the police to enforce it. So when the devil is not allowing you, you must enter into intercession and prayer to enforce that thing that, hey, I cannot allow you demons to do this for me. I am being justified. And Christ has paid the price for me. I cannot go on. Say, I am justified. Say now, I am sanctified. I think like God. I behave like God. My mindset is God. And the word sanctified can also mean you are set apart, separated. You are not part of that kingdom. You, are, you, have a, you have a new kingdom you belong to. You don't think like them. You don't think like them. The next one. You are what? You are what? You are a partaker of what? Sin? Partaker of what? God's nature. Master, useless. That nature of God, that swag that God has, you have some. Are you here with me? You have God's word. Nature. What is the nature of God? He saw darkness. He said, let there be light. 
he caused those things that be not as though they were. He was asleep and they woke him up and told him that there was a storm. He said, where is your faith? He looked at the sea and said, peace be still. Eponia Strochi O Jiwaye Dada Enuma Wo Namwimu Tunjum Yiwa Yeda Na misioni pa bempo. And from ampo. Tiewo. Asro chiso. Tiewo. Let me tell you a story. I know you say that it is because it was Jesus. Let me tell you the nature of God. I've had crusades. And I have people who are witnesses. One of the people who have followed me, my Lord of Martin. People don't know. Maybe. I can have crusade in Ebri. And the whole town, it is raining. But where I'm holding the crusade, no rain. We cleared the grains out. When we were starting this building, the traditional people came here. They said we should do some kusun. Or else they will let it rain and this place will flood and destroy the construction. I said, I tell you this. It will rain everywhere. But this place it will not rain. And guess what? It could rain everywhere. I can come from my house. I can see rain. I get it. No rain. Now I was telling God, God, we need rain. We have to buy water. Every <laughs> you We have we have to buy water to what? God, we need that rain to let the place dry and the concrete heal. I have to go back to God, please. At this stage, <laughs> I have asked God to, it has happened in a meeting before, where has God rained gold on us and people left the church building and the address, as if people have poured palm oil, you sprinkled it on their addresses. He's shaking his head, he remembers. You know, you, know, you know what? When you have the nature of God, you talk like God. Then he said, and this man of God, I said, God doesn't delay with situations. God, no, 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 no. God doesn't delay with situations. Then, you see, it is man that has to think, and if you have the mind of God, somebody brings you a point. Yes, I was talking to somebody, a very honorable person. Within five minutes of, I've never met her before. She was sitting here. Within five minutes, I've described her life. And she was like, I said, woman, please, it's no word of knowledge, no word of wisdom. I just know. I just know. Say, I have the nature of God. Say, I'm a partaker of his divine nature. So if Jesus can walk on water, he can also walk on death. I say you walk on water. You walk on your storms. You will see storm coming. Everybody is running away. And you are walking on it. And say, ah, who are you? Who are you? And you tell them, he will never suffer his holy one to see corruption. Next week I will tell you, you are blessed. Yeah. You are sanctified. You are complete in him. You are what makes God complete. Without you, God is incomplete. Next week. Come on, give Jesus a mighty clap of him. I'm, I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracle. I live a life of favor. Why? We are the chosen, we are the chosen generation born for all I require for life. We 
Everything you require for life, he has given to you. You need to activate it. I know. Who, come on. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. Come on. I know who God says I am. Where he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Listen. Let me tell you this. I was doing a crusade. And they told me that a lot of men of God have been there because that particular place, there is, they are buried lions and things under the place. So when people come there, when they do ministry, they don't succeed and they fail. And that's the place we're doing the crusade. And they brought me somebody who had elephantiasis. No elephantiasis. The leg was very big. And I asked the person, what is your shoe size? He said, he doesn't know because he doesn't put on shoe all his life. I said, well, how shall we wear He mentioned. I said, do you know Metia Bones Hamso? You know how many know Metia Bones Hamso? Mary Makosoro. I said, you are going to do it. The guy looked at me and said, I said, yes, you are going to jump. He jumped, and before I knew it, all of us knew it. The guy's leg instantly, both, has become the same. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, somebody misbehaved. It was a fetish priest in the area. I don't know whether he was the one who did it to me. I don't know. He came there and started insulting me by saying, ah, and I told the people at the Christian, I'm talking about Hebrew here now. I have witnesses, so it reminds me. I said, by morning, if I'm leaving, you will go mad. When I was leaving town in the morning, this fetish priest was naked, walking down the valley, coming to Accra, naked. When he saw me, he waved at me. And I waved back. You see, if you don't know who you are, people will tell you who you are not. When Jesus was on earth, he himself told us, I am the bread of life. The late Archbishop Benson, the author said, if you, don't, if you don't say I am, nobody will say that what. People will only call you by, if I ask you, what is your name? What do you say? Prince. So I'll call you Prince from today. Won't, if I told you your name is fool, that's what I'll call you. So when people are trying to call you something, look at them and tell them, excuse me, address me well. I am Mr. Prince. You say you are Prince, so I didn't add Mr. If you had told me you are Reverend Dr. Prince. <laughs> Olivo, what is your name? Daniel. Daniel. Prophet of preach ministers. Prophet of preach ministers, yeah. You know one, one thing I like about the Nigerian people? They are the only people that add engineer Philip. <laughs> is it true? Right? Engineer is a title in Nigeria. Engineer Philip. Barista Cosmos. So I want you to be on your feet. Go to serving people and tell people. Don't say the one I said, though. Tell people who you are. Who you are is what you must be that you have not become. Go to serving people. And don't look for any useless person. If you're not a useless channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
am I that you are thinking of me? That you love me? Now I call. Is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? How you love me? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend. I am a child of God. Sing I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a son of God. He calls me child. I am a son, yeah. I am a child of God. I am a child. I say, who am I? You are my full of me. How do you love me? When I call, when I call, is it true that you are thinking of me? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? How you love me? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. One, two, three, go. I am a child of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am a child of God. Sing it. I am a child of God. He calls me child. Come on, say, I am a child. I am a child of God. That's what he calls you. God Almighty, God of glory, you have called me God Almighty, God of glory, God of glory, you have No, listen, I can just imagine Abraham walking and calling himself father of many nations. No, Niba. <laughs> father of many nations. And he doesn't have a child. He people say, hey, father of many nations. He can you and this your faith? Father, when you start saying that you are this and people will call you, and look at that. You know, but when they see you breaking through, today Abraham has many children. Is it true or is it not true? He had Isaac, had Jacob and Esau. Jacob and alone gave 12. Now Israel is everywhere. So I, am I talking to somebody here? So you to when you start calling yourself that, people say, no, on Sunday day, shout, I am a child of God, man. Look at someone and say, I have everything I need. You didn't say you bold. You say, I have everything I need. You say, I lack nothing. When I need things, all I need to do is to go home. Listen, I've met people who will meet you and say, Master, I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. My parents have money. But it's just I want to live my life. That's why. If I go home. So some of you, this fasting period is going home period. You are going home to carry your booty. To carry your breakthrough. To carry your successes. Say, I'm going home. Say, I am what God says I am. I am who God says I am. I don't care if you believe it. Yesterday, I told somebody. He was arguing with me or we're having a decision. I'm sure he was even, he's even watching. I said, whether you believe that mobile phone works or not, it works. I don't know what is proton, electron, neutron. And how this thing you call 
he goes to America. I don't know which cable wire it passes through. I don't know how, but somebody has calculated realized that there are some lines be in the realms of the spirit that takes it. I say, me too, I believe that when I say things, it also goes to God. And it also comes. Just like I talk to the person abroad, the person speaks back. I also believe when I talk to God, he also speaks back. Why can you believe that mobile phone can work? But you can't believe that God can speak back to you. It's your belief. It's your belief. When I tell you to pray, say that I finish prayer, I say, Did God say it? He said, God is in it. I said, Wow, how? How can you pray and God will not say it? Bluetooth cry age, my thank you. Infrared age, man. You can't get connected. Look, I said, This fast in the air. I'm connecting myself. Giddy, giddy, giddy. So if you go to God, don't go to God and say, <laughs> me, I mean, send me but you know, God, I'm one of those who don't deserve. Who says you don't deserve? If you don't deserve, live here. I come as your son. I come as your child. I've come. Whether you like me or don't like me, everybody knows that you are my father. I have come. So what will you do about my situation? And God will look at it and say, What's what thing? What's what thing? And I was say, hey, uh, God, I said, I need a new house. And then, okay, go and do this, go and do this. Hey, thank you, God. Yeah. As a father, He will rebuke you, but He will not throw you away. <laughs> Lift up your hands and talk to God yourself. Talk to God yourself. Sire brought a such a bomb. Then a horror. Sire Sing it for me. Talk to him. Me bother, who come in, who tell you now? Let's sing it, please. Would you want to put your boots on? Yes, see me, what they need a muscle, muscle, a razzy in your macoy. Salvation is in his name. Healing is in his name. They will say you are not it, but you must believe you are.
Believe in who you are. Never let that go off you. They told me I could not get where to where I am. They gave me prophecies concerning it. But I believe in myself and I believe in my God. Joseph's brothers did not believe it. They showed him, but he still became. Don't look down on who you are. I feel strongly you should do something. Professor or speak into 2021. Prophesy or speak into 2021. So you can say, This year I'm giving birth. This year I'm getting married. I'm, this year I'm buying my house. This year I'm doing this. This year I'm graduating. This year I'm entering the university. This year, prophesy into the year. Prophesy into the year. Prophesy. You have, you have that gut feeling right now that you are God's child. So something is happening within you. So prophesy it to yourself. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it. The Bible says, I believe. Therefore have I spoken. You also believe. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. You have to say it. If nobody will prophesy on you, lay hands and prophesy on yourself. Prophesy it. Speak. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give me second Corinthians chapter 4. I believe, therefore have I spoken. You also believe, therefore have you spoken. When you believe, you must speak it. When you believe, you must speak it. Speak, I'm healed. Speak, I'm delivered. Speak, I'm favored. As I step into the office on Monday, ah, whatever is mine will be given to me. I'll be offered my seat. Ah, speak it, speak it, speak it. I believe, therefore have I spoken. When you believe, you speak it. Prophesy. Prophesy it. Monday morning, I'm being called for the contract and I'm signing it with the deal secured. Prophesy it. I'm healthy. I'm well to do. Let it come from your belly. Men for look at Kenka. Out of the, your heart, speak it, prophesy it. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. Prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. I'm healed. My kidneys are healed. My lungs are healed. My liver healed. My heart is healed. My organs are healed. My eyes are made whole. Professor, I can read now. I can see now. I understand now. Prophesy. We have this same spirit of faith. According. As it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. When you believe, you must speak it. It's a language of faith. That's a language Christians must give. Don't speak your fear. Don't speak your trouble. Speak it. I'm receiving helpers. I'm having helpers. People I need for my business, I'm getting them. The connection I need, I'm meeting them. The contact I need, I'm getting them. This is my week of sporadic breakthrough, spontaneous breakthroughs. 
Zigidi bigidi. Yeah, prophesy. 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 Prophesy on yourself. Yeah, you believe something, you must speak it. You believe it, you must speak it. Speak it. My wedding is coming up. My baby dedication is coming up. How do you know? Do you feel it? No, I don't have to feel it. I state it. I speak it by faith. It is not a feeling. It has nothing to do with feelings. Keep prophesying on yourself. Yes, ago somebody told me, What till God has not called me? <laughs> Today, he knows God has called me. Somebody looked at me and said, Francis, you are moving too fast. Francis, you are moving too fast. Why? Until the Elijah's die, the Elijah's will not manifest. I said, It is to you. Should I wait for Elijah to die before I manifest? I said, That is what you believe. I don't believe that. He's still waiting. I am still moving. What you believe, you speak it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You will only speak what you believe. That is what you believe. Don't speak your emotions. Speak your faith. Change your world by your faith. Speak it. You are fasting. You are in the right mood to do the speaking. You are in the right frame to do the speaking. I will decree a thing and to come to pass. You will decree and to be established. Speak it. Casa. Casa. You can even take a pen and paper. Write what you believe down. Write it down. Write it somewhere. Give date. Give timelines. I believe this. I believe. Keep prophesying. Keep prophesying. Rukaya, like a sheep on troubled waters. We are still praying. When we close from here, we are going home. We are breaking our fast, so don't worry. It's all part of the break on our fast. I want you to prophesy concerning yourself. I feel the heavens are opened here. I sense an open heavens where there is interaction between God and his children. Talk to him. If, you, if, if not anything at all, tell him what you want. Prophesy. They said, oh, wait, they won't me yet. Wait, they won't me. Tell God, I, my DNA is God. There is nothing that God cannot do. So if my DNA is God, I cannot be told. You cannot tell an eagle you can't fly. Tell that to the fowl. Tell that to the hen or the cock, but not the eagle. You can't tell an eagle you can't fly. What are you saying? Maybe you are a cock. Listen, nobody can arrest you for speaking. It's your life. They said, nobody gets a business in this office. He said, I'm nobody. I'm not nobody. I'm somebody. I am not part of the nobodies. Somebody comes here and say, Pastor, are you a Nigerian? I said, no. Why? He said, Ghanaians don't do big things. The way you do big things, you must be a Nigerian. Nonsense. My DNA is not like Ghana. I have a Holy Ghost DNA. Speak God's mind. Speak it. If you speak and you forget, speak and write it. 
Tell the world. Tell yourself, I don't need deliverance. I'm delivered. No demon can torment me out of my life. I cannot be called a sickler. I am never sick. I am not poor. Next week you will know that. He became poor that you will become rich. He doesn't call you poor. Society will call you poor. Society will call you poor. life concerning 13. Everybody in the family is like this. You are not part of that family. You are not part of that family. Oh, Bushia, wait, a chance. Why are you here? No! You are not part of that. A chance. You just got to know who he has made you. Speak it. I love it when people tell me you can't do it. <laughs> That's what I hate most. You tell me I can't, it will be done. My God will show his power. If you are sick in your body, step forward to me quickly. As the prayer is going on, if you are sick in your body, step forward for me. Let them space up a bit and find out what is wrong and tell me. You can take your seat. Take your seats and keep praying. Keep making declarations. To wipe away my tears. So when the world laughs at me, and say that I'm a fool. I will bow my knees. But Lord, you've been faithful. What's wrong with you?
I say it. Also, he went to some group of people. He came back. He came back. Like but when he let us sit down. Close your eyes for me. Who brought him? I want to talk to them. Is there is there family around? I didn't hear. Let the mom come. Close your eyes. You cannot be sacrificed. You cannot be sacrificed. That's your son. Stand behind you. Touch him. Out of him, you go. No! Amen. Come on, give us a much love of faith. Can we lift up our offering to the Lord? Are you still prophesying to yourself? When they call all useless people, don't go. Oh, amen. One day, A politician, a big politician, said, Pastor, meet us to go and pray. And that, when you finish praying, they'll give you 500 Ghana. And I hear the place was full. So they called me and said, Ah, you, you didn't come. I said, Who should be new? I said, 500 Ghana. <laughs> and the person said, You lost the way we went. They gave us 500 Ghana. We ate. I was there. When they called me, now why didn't I come? I said, me, I don't go to I said, all of them can pray. But I mean, one prayer I pray will solve the problem. I said, then how can they meet me? So me, I went. And when I went, mine was one on one. I won't tell you how much I came with. <laughs> when they call useless people, if you know who you are, don't join in. Because you are full in Ambro. Oh, dear children. No. Oh, amen. amen. Let not somebody tell you that I'm marrying you because you are so useless so that I can make you something. No. Because I have some value, man. I didn't hear you say I have some value, man. Now, rich, lift up your rich human, rich man offering. Lift it up, your rich woman, rich man of and say this of Lord Jesus. I'm not poor. I am rich. I have what it takes to make it. Today, I walk in power and authority as I present this offering. Bless the work of my hands and cause me to increase on every side. In Jesus' name, amen. Now lift up your tithe, your pledge, your seed. If you pledge 20 and one seed, you have your first fruit, you have your tithe. Lift it up, let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, ah, I can't hear you. Say, Lord Jesus, this is what I have. As I honor you, your word says, I shall honor you and my bands will never be empty. As I'm honoring you, let my bands be full. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to dance as if the world is yours. Not because you feel like, but because you know you have to dance. We are a chosen soul. We are a chosen channel. It is a place we discover and realign our lives to the assignments God has for us. A church is not just a beautiful building. We are the church. Here at Bridge Ministries International, we are releasing a generation of promise, purpose, and power. The foundation of this church is grounded in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of path to dwell in. Beloved, if you want a church that will build you, 
repair and restore you for your divine assignment, there is no other than bridge. If you want a church that will cause you to serve God with all your heart, a church that will nurture your gifts and talents and nurture your abilities to the glory of God, there is no other than bridge. We believe in royalty, service, soul winning and leadership. We believe in God and we believe in our set man of God, a wonderful father, anointed preacher, wise teacher and prophet, Reverend F.D. Yale, who is supported by an indefatigable team, Team Bridge. We can't wait for you to join our wonderful family. We are the best church in the whole world, Bridge Ministries International, where lives are switched on.